the fall of Detroit. The storied city built by cars and music is literally a shadow of its former self. Crime and corruption have pushed people out of Detroit. The exodus has meant abandoned buildings and low tax revenue, which leads to more crime and corruption. Now, the spiral has been happening for decades, and yesterday it pushed Detroit into the largest municipal bankruptcy in the history of the United States. In short, from a financial point of view, let me be blunt, Detroit's broke. Stark words. That's the governor of Michigan making the announcement yesterday on his website, and he didn't stop there. Public safety. Detroit has been on the top 10 list of the most violent cities in 24 of the last 27 years. Response times for police calls are at 58 minutes versus a national average of 11 minutes. The clearance rate on cases is 8.7%. Then you can go on to fire, EMS, street lights, the list goes on. This is not viable nor appropriate for the citizens of the city. All right, we will get back to the governor in a minute. But first, the mayor of Detroit and the city's emergency manager, well, they faced the media in person yesterday evening. Uh, this is very difficult for all of us. But if it's going to make uh, the citizens better off, uh, then this is a new start for us. Services will remain open, paychecks will be made, bills will be paid. Nothing changes from the standpoint of the ordinary citizen's perspective. What this does do is give us an opportunity to begin to address some of the city's overbearing debt, which we have discussed ad nauseum at this point begin to provide the level of services and address the health, safety, and welfare concerns of the citizens of the city and to move forward to a fresh start for this great city. Okay, so let's figure this out. The people in charge in Detroit, Michigan, they stuck to the script yesterday. They went home, tried to get some sleep. Probably not. They came back to work, and then the governor, he comes out swinging. Now's our opportunity to stop 60 years of decline. This is fundamental. Has anyone liked the Detroit of five years ago, of 10 years ago, of 15 years ago? How long has this gone on and people had not stopped to say, stop kicking the can down the road and do something? We are doing something. This is the forum. This is the place to do it in. This is the place to deal with the debt question. This is the place to put a plan for improved services for the citizens. There are tremendously good things going on in Detroit outside of city government. Let's support those by resolving city government and getting on a positive path. So when you ask the worst case, I don't dwell on that. There's a lot of hard work, difficult work to do. That work will get done. And we will come out with a stronger, better Detroit and a format to grow the city because the citizens of this, not only the city, but the state deserve it. And we're going to give them good service. All right, still looking for details. Detroit city manager Kevin Orr gave us the hard numbers. You know, we have a billion dollar budget, and as the governor said, 38% of that is legacy cost, debt service. Another 48% of that, or almost 80%, okay, are fixed costs for police, fire, EMS, right? So we have approximately 20% that we use for everything else, every pothole, every snow plow, every garbage, everything else is about $200 million. Of that 11 to $12 billion of unsecured debt, if we took that $200 million and did nothing else in the city, Another pothole, another snow doesn't get plowed, no garbage gets picked, we did everything else within the city. It would take us over 50 years to pay that debt. So, so there's no way home from that equation. Now, as for the governor, Eric Schatzker and Sarah Eisen got the chance to ask him some questions today on Market Makers. Bailouts shouldn't be on the table, either at the state or the federal government level. It's about really investing in smart programs that give better services to the citizens. We've been doing that. We've done a number of programs in terms of helping remove blight, in terms of public safety, in terms of parks and recreation. We're going to continue that path to do great things in the city, but they're going to be focused approaches. And we've had good partnership with the federal government. Governor, you've had an opportunity to watch the automakers up close. Did Ford and Gen excuse me, did Chrysler and General Motors experience in bankruptcy lend you confidence that this was the right path for the city of Detroit to take? 
Well, in terms of what happened with the two automakers, it is helpful in many respects for the general public because they saw how that process worked successfully with bankruptcy. They saw how they continued to sell cars, and now those companies are flourishing. And I hope very much the same model happens here and should happen here. Now we've reached that low point. Now we can get stable, and then we can grow. Because to give you some context on this is people don't realize how many great things are going on in Detroit all the time outside of city government. Young people are flocking to Detroit. Let's solve the city government problems, and let's grow. Governor Snyder, why do you have faith that this is going to work? Why should we have faith that this is going to work, that Detroit is going to exit bankruptcy whenever that happens as a going concern? Because you could, I know it's not a perfect comparison, but you could compare a city in some respects to a company. A bad company with a restructured balance sheet is still a bad company. And Detroit has a host of problems, not all of which are going to be solved by bankruptcy. Well, this provides that format, and the good part is, is we're putting the processes, procedures in place for long-term success. Again, if you look at the comeback of the state of Michigan, we were a challenged state if you go back to 2009. We were at the bottom. We're the comeback state today, and if you look at our financial practices at the state level, we've, had, we've got $580 million in our rainy day fund. We've done the best, best budgets that's been done in decades in the state in the last two or three years. So it shows what you can do with good leadership and direction, and that's what's going to happen in the city of Detroit too because we're partnering with them and we're going to succeed together. Now Eric mentioned the automakers which did release statements uh, on Detroit from Ford quote we believe a strong Detroit is critical for a strong Michigan and our industry. The city has a difficult job ahead and we are optimistic that governmental leaders will be successful in strengthening the community. And from Chrysler Chrysler Group believes in the city of Detroit and its people. We not only continue to invest in the city and its residents by adding to our presence in Detroit, we also are committed to playing a positive role in its revitalization. And finally, from General Motors, quote, a healthy auto industry will play a part in Detroit's comeback story, and GM is doing its part. So what do the experts have to say about Detroit? Here's a reaction on Bloomberg Television this morning. This is an, just a perfect storm of bad things that's why Detroit is in the place it is. And I think that the federal government and the nation should actually look at this as a bad example. Bad leadership, bad politics, bad economics, and bad long-term planning is what led to this. I don't know if this is going to be the beginning of a renaissance of Detroit because they've just made themselves a tough road to hoe. Filing bankruptcy is basically going to cut them out of the municipal bond market and a city like Detroit needs to borrow money for a lot of reasons. And I think they're going to be frozen out. And at the core is their credit standing. Trust. Who's going to invest? Who's going to believe they'll get the return on their investment? What will the premium be? These are all the unknowns. Is there a market penalty, which we believe there will be? We have many friends and we have many discussions to have. You know, Andy Dillon is a very thoughtful, substantive, uh, forward-thinking, professional-grade manager. Uh, and he's, you know, he, he's at the forefront of this discussion. Uh, Kevin Orr has done a very professional job of putting together a proposal. It might not be the proposal that's ultimately adopted, but no one can argue that it's thoughtful and considerate.